the only time that the name Lucifer appears in the Bible is in the prophecy of Isaiah chapter 14 at verse 12. So Lucifer, son of the morning, how you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. Now many people think this refers to a mighty angel who rebels against God in heaven and is cast to the earth to wreak all sorts of havoc among humans. They give him the name the devil or Satan. But this passage does not refer to a rebellious angel. It refers to someone else who is carefully identified in Isaiah 14. You can see in verse 12 that the person called Lucifer is being directly spoken to. Oh, Lucifer, the prophet Isaiah, has a message for Lucifer. But who is he talking to? Well, we're left in no doubt about this. For verse 4 of the same chapter records God's instruction to Isaiah. You will take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, O oh, Lucifer. So Lucifer is the king of Babylon. Definitely a human being. A proverb, by the way, is a special prophetic message. After his 14th chapter, Isaiah writes other proverbs against nations that existed in Isaiah's day. These parables are about nations on earth, in the Middle East, not about places in heaven. The 14th chapter is similarly about an earthly nation, namely Babylon and its king. So Lucifer is a nickname for the king of Babylon, who was conquering many nations about a hundred years after Isaiah's time and building a huge empire by the might of his armies. Here's the extent of the empire of the Babylonians on this map. You can see why the king of such an empire would become such a proud man. And Nebuchadnezzar was the most famous of the Babylonian kings whose headquarters were in Babylon, which was one of the wonders of the ancient world. Babylon's history began not long after Noah, but Assyria overshadowed Babylon for most of the 7th century BC. In 612 BC, Babylon overthrew Assyrian rule. Then Nebuchadnezzar ruled Babylon from 604 BC and began building a mighty empire. The empire reached its height around about 580 or 570 BC. In 586, Nebuchadnezzar destroyed Jerusalem and took the Jews into captivity in Babylon. But Nebuchadnezzar himself died in 562 BC and his great empire ended in 539, conquered by the Medo-Persians. Now Isaiah had prophesied about the king of Babylon long before the empire reached its height. But the prophet Daniel prophesied during most of the time of that great empire. The rise and fall of Babylon reminds us, even the mighty descend into the dust. How are the mighty fallen? The great city of Babylon eventually decayed into ruins and remains as ruins to our own day despite the efforts to rebuild it by the self-styled modern Nebuchadnezzar, Saddam Hussein. And that's Isaiah's message to Nebuchadnezzar in a nutshell. How are the mighty fallen? Curiously enough, this foreseen demise of Nebuchadnezzar is the reason why the great emperor is called Lucifer. The Hebrew word translated into Lucifer through the Latin means star or shining one, a reference to the star Venus, which appears in the morning sky, often called the morning star. The star appears just above the horizon before dawn. When the sun comes up, Venus fades out of sight. During the morning, Venus travels fairly low across the sky, but is unseen because of the bright glare of the sun. Then it sinks to the far horizon, then disappears below the horizon. The path of Venus describes well the career of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. He began his career as a successful general, the much-feared scourge of the Middle Eastern nations, 
the brightly shining morning star. Later, as a mighty emperor, he thought to enter the realm of God, the highest heaven. Lucifer is accused of wanting to ascend above the stars and become like the Most High God. Isaiah's parable of Lucifer, the morning star, was designed to show Nebuchadnezzar that despite his eminence among men, there was one who was much greater than he, the God of heaven, Yahweh, the God of Israel. That true God would bring Nebuchadnezzar back to earth and end his empire and his life in the darkness of oblivion. Nebuchadnezzar's arrogance was also the subject of a dream that he had, which is reported in the book of Daniel chapter 4. These were the visions of my head while on my bed I was looking and behold a tree in the midst of the earth and its height was great. The tree grew and became strong. Its height reached to the heavens, and it could be seen to the ends of the earth. The words, reached to the heavens, reminds us of the symbol of the morning star ascending the sky. And Daniel, with God's help, interprets the dream for Nebuchadnezzar. The tree that you saw, which grew and became strong, whose height reached to the heavens, it's you, O king, who have grown and become strong. For your greatness has grown and reaches to the heavens. In that dream, Nebuchadnezzar and his empire was figured as a mighty tree, overshadowing many peoples. He grew high into the political heavens of his time. And Daniel continues the interpretation. The king saw a watcher, a holy one, coming down from heaven and saying, Chop down the tree and destroy it but leave its stump and roots in the earth. This was obviously a prophecy of the end of Nebuchadnezzar's greatness and of his empire, of which only a remnant lived on in history. And Daniel continues, They shall drive you from men. Your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make you eat the grass like the oxen. Nebuchadnezzar himself was sentenced by the holy angel watcher to live a long period of madness as a beast in the field eating grass. The object of this sentence was to humble Nebuchadnezzar and make him realize that he was no equal for the true God. Daniel says that he would eat grass till you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever he chooses. Nebuchadnezzar finally admitted that he learned his lesson. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the King of Heaven all of whose works are truth, and his ways justice, and those who walk in pride he is able to put down. Nebuchadnezzar himself was an example. Nebuchadnezzar had learned the truth of the old proverb, Pride comes before a fall. The real king of heaven was not Nebuchadnezzar, but the God of Israel, the God who inspired Isaiah and Daniel to record the fate of Babylon and of its king. The true meaning of Isaiah 14 is that it is directed against a man, the king of Babylon, probably Nebuchadnezzar. He is Lucifer, the morning star. The dream of the tree that reached to the heavens and was cut down definitely symbolized King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. The parallel between this dream and the symbol of the morning star that fell to the earth from heaven is obvious. Can we escape the conclusion that this morning star, or Lucifer, is the king of Babylon also? Despite this, there will be some who still believe this chapter is a parable of the fall from heaven of a rebellious angel who is exiled to earth to become a tormentor of humankind. But look at the following details. They surely can't support such a theory. In Isaiah 14, verses 9 to 10, we have kings of nations shall speak and say to you, Have you also become as weak as we? Have you become like us? Would humans ever be able to suggest that an angel is weak like them? No, an aging Nebuchadnezzar could well be a target for such scorn from kings that he had conquered previously and had treated badly. Isaiah 14, 11, the maggot is spread under you, and worms cover you. 
Do angels have bodies that are eaten by maggots and worms? Angels never die, we're told, by the Lord Jesus Christ. But human bodies are said to be eaten by worms in the grave. Lucifer is a human being. Those who see you will gaze at you and consider you, saying, Is this the man who made the earth tremble, who shook kingdoms? Would people call a fallen angel a man who shook kingdoms? No. That's exactly what they could call Nebuchadnezzar, the ex-savage warrior. The Lucifer devil theory states that he is an angel that rebelled in heaven. Where God dwells. But Jesus taught his disciples to pray to God, saying, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's obvious that Jesus didn't believe that there'd been a rebellion against God's will in heaven. Who is Lucifer? A rebellious angel, also called the devil or Satan? Or Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon? Here's my answer. No to the first. And yes to the second. I believe that's conclusive. The information on this topic can be found on the Bible Education website www.bibled.com.